G'day mates and welcome back. Another Fido Daily is inbound and today we're checking out Arkshan uh, who has a perfect place in the meta currently with the heavy emphasis on AP junglers. Um, you can pretty much pick him into Tristana, into Corki, uh, into Huey. All these matchups are totally fine for Arkshan. You'll be able to get push or at least match push, have some kill pressure and scale just the same. Now we're running a standard PTA page, uh, right? Just uh, PTA. I prefer taking a uh, cut down, but you can certainly go Coupe de Gras as well, uh, Legend of Alacrity, and Presence of Mind. And secondary, just grab, um, you know, Bone Plating Overgrowth. So if you're against a Mage, you can grab Second Wind. If you're against, like, Cassidy, then you can grab uh, Demolish. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, learning into the game, I would suggest actually invading on Akshan. Akshan E is such a strong spell. You can see here, uh, we're going for an invade, and I'm holding my skill point. Obviously, skilling E for lane isn't great, uh, but if you can secure a kill, uh, your E will reset off the first kill, so it's pretty much impossible for the enemies to uh, win the level 1 skirmish. We can see the Bards there. We want to try and min-max the damage uh, with our E. Uh, we slide in, get the kill. Now, we could have actually leveled Q there and potentially killed Bard as well. Um, I think Akshan E is one of the things that has been nerfed the most this patch, and there we go. We go for the infinite swing. If you're interested in doing these infinite swings, I have a perfect guide for you uh, from scratch in 15-20 minutes. You'll be able to do this on any wall yourself. So check out one of my other videos. I'll link it in the description below. But you can see how excited my teammates are getting from just me spinning around. All right, When your Akshan has first blood and he is a master of the infinite swings and he shows you that he can do it, you just have complete confidence in winning the game, right? Like this guy knows what he's doing. He's definitely a nerd and he's got some extra gold at the start. Okay, So um, I think that the infinite swings, they don't have that many practical applications apart from just this one right in in this midwave um but you can do them just to you know just for a laugh for your teammates to uh to have some more confidence in you uh to show off i think it's a lot of fun to do uh but regardless we started e so we we tried to go for a trade you saw that i swung off the wall there that's a really nice trade you can do against melee champs where you swing off the wall um after autoing them just make sure you auto the champion first before you swing right because your swing will not target the enemy champion over creeps unless you've recently attacked them right unless they've got your passive on them um, it will not target the enemy champ so you either need to try and weave your Q through the wave and then swing or just uh, pretty much trade with autos I think that's one thing that they have nerfed about auction a lot just the fact that you can't really force trades um, as well as you could before you kind of just have to play the auto game okay and on Akshan it's pretty important to build waves you can see here against melee champs I'd say Silas Akali same thing just build a wave uh, crash the wave and if there's nothing to do go ahead and just harass Katarina on the tower but here I saw that Graves went for a failed invade so my hypothesis is there's a very high chance that Graves is actually not even level 3 yet um, and we can see we found him on uh, on the Gromp. And Akshan, you know, one of the great things about this champion is you do a lot of early damage. So you can get away with cheese kills like this. Um, remember that your E will reset. And uh, this time around, we, we take them. We take them on a journey with us, we bring everybody towards us, we kill the jungler, we TP out. So absolutely fantastic for our game, fantastic for our teammates as well. Our jungler gets ahead in tempo to that play. Um, that's definitely something you can do. So when you do get that three wave crash, and I think you'll consistently get it on Akshan, just have a look around the map, pay attention. You know, it, it might not be the best option to just autopilot and hit the tower and try to harass uh, your opponent on the tower. The, you know, with your stealth, it's very, very easy to get roams off. That's why this champion is STN solo queue. And we've got, you know, our rule over a thousand gold. We've pushed the wave, whether it's a cannon or not, just need to get our base off and be as strong as we can be on the map. Now, when you're when you're actually walking back from base, just consider whether your opponent has a turn. You can see here, uh, you know, I'm pressing tab to check Katarina items, and uh, I'm considering whether she's actually going to be roaming top, and I need to make my Pantheon aware of that, or whether she's recalling. And here, this is really really important. What I did, right? Instead of worrying my Pantheon and ruining his game by him thinking that Katarina's coming top, I've actually you know, checked with my face, has she recalled or not? And then, you know, it just helps It just helps the rest of your team. So just make sure that when you come back off a reset, if you're not confident whether your enemy is roaming or resetting, just go all the way to the tower as far as you can until, you know, you would you pretty much tank aggro and just see if they're, you know, if they're doing a lazy recall, you can either stop it or at the very least get the information for your team. And uh, these kind of angles are really great for Akshan because you can get a really wide swing and close a lot of distance on this wall. So this wall, any fights around this wall are really, really good. Uh, we see that our Echo was posturing, we're just kind of hovering him, but uh, nothing ended up happening. Again, you see me, I've pushed the wave, 
I'm considering is there something to do on the map because my jungler's in base and my support is in base, I'm not going to be looking for a roam. So this is probably one of the few um, opportunities to harass him under tower where there's no opportunity cost, you know, like there's no um, there's no downside to it. And just try and weave in a couple autos here and there. It's okay to take a tower shot on Akshan as long as you have the passive active, right? That's something you can do. You can auto her once and then come back into tower range auto her again, take one tower shot, but your passive sort of denies like half the tower shot damage and it's a be quite worth. And when your opponent gets low like this, you can do this cheeky little dive where you spit on the tower and they can't really get away from you, you just keep spitting. It looks very, very silly. Um, we could have ex executed that even cleanup. So I absolutely love playing this champion because of how creative you can be. Heading back to base now, just looking to buy a uh, recurve bow. I think that is the best, uh, most gold efficient component out of Kraken Slayer. I think Kraken first item on Akshan just because you can proc the third auto so easily with your passive and the move speed is fantastic as well. So yeah, you can see I made that mistake that we were talking about earlier, right? Using my E before getting a mark on Katarina, my E did absolutely no damage to her, right? And now I don't have any chase spells, any chase potentials. And uh, unfortunately she does end up getting away, but at least here we didn't compensate. You know, we saw that we had a massive wave coming in, so uh, we didn't we didn't actually suicide as well as miss out for the kill. You know, we just accepted our losses, uh, realized that we used our E incorrectly. You know, we could have also just ordered her at the end and maybe gotten the kill. We were just being a little bit too fancy with it. Happens sometimes. Just accept it, move on. Remember that, you know, because she got chunked, even though we didn't get the 300 gold bounty, we can still get the plate. We can still crash another wave, we can still play for a good recall for ourselves. You know, the situation is still good for us, it's just we, we didn't get the most uh, out of it. And uh, yeah, just try and line up your Q to uh, get the whole wave. You can see this does happen sometimes when your melee creeps are tanking the tower, the enemy melees might walk around like this. So it's important that you actually time your Q early enough so that you don't miss out, you know, on damage because the creeps curve around and now you suddenly don't have this line. Uh, perfect line for your Q. You can see there as well, you know, every time I walk up to double order the tower, I'm I'm looking, I'm really watching her character, right? Because that's going to tell me the intention. If I walk up, do a double tap on the tower, walk away, walk up again, do a double tap, and then do it a third time, she's going to expect it, right? I, I have to try and make my movement less predictable, whether that be, you know, you double tap, then you do a single tap, and then you don't even walk up and maybe you, you order her instead of the tower. You have to make yourself very unpredictable. Otherwise, every time you step up to the tower, she might get the confidence to jump on you and you'll lose a trade. And really, it's not worth the, the, the plate, right? The plate's only 125 gold. If you take a bad trade, you're forced to take a bad base, you're gonna lose far more than that. Okay, so uh, with Akshan, I think there's uh you got to find a balance. you got to find the sweet spot between harassing the opponent, uh, you know, playing for the plate and just respecting. And uh, the more you play, the more you'll feel it. You can see that I spun on the inhib. I feel like the inhib is the best um, in terms of covering distance from the base. If you walk back to mid lane, I feel like spinning on the inhib uh, gives you the fastest move speed, at least from my... Um, from my experience. And uh, yeah, we come back to lane. You can see now, once we get into mid game, I want you guys to never freeze waves, okay? Just literally spam push on Akshan. As soon as you get four to five points in your queue, you are spam pushing one wave at a time, all right? You're not building waves. You're not doing the early game shenanigans. Just push, okay? Because it's very hard to kill your lane now because the supports are a lot more involved, right? Moving to mid uh, at around 10 minutes. You know, there's, there's objectives up, there's grubs, there's dragons, whatever. So uh, you always try and contribute to your team if you can. And only if you have absolutely nothing to do. You can see that I'm already getting ganked instantly as soon as I walk up there. Um, if you have absolutely nothing to do, then you can consider, um, you know, freezing the wave or building a wave or harassing on the tower. Otherwise, it's just you shove one wave, you move to your team. Shove one wave, move to your team. I can see here my team's making a play, uh, but I also know that Katarina is recalled. So I'm moving backwards into Fog of War. Just considering my options, I do have TP and I do have W, right? So I was considering maybe TPing bot, TPing top, but then I realized I don't actually have unleashed teleport, so I'd have to go on the tower and that would be kind of far away. And I was like, okay, all good. Just gonna hit the tower, grab a plate, uh, collect the next wave really deep, right? There's no excuses, guys. If you're not moving anywhere, there's no excuses to be late to your wave. So make sure that, you know, instead of wasting, overstaying your turn, right? You just finish your turn early, grab the next wave early, and then you'll have a, you know, another timer to look for a roam. 
And this is a great thing about auction, you just stealth, they don't know which side you went to, you know, they don't, they don't know who you are exactly, and you have a great gap closer in the E. We protected our topside jungle, you know, after making a bot play, it would be natural for the enemy jungler to try and trade. They didn't, and again, you can see, uh, messed up the uh, the infinite swing, that's a classic. Uh, don't feel bad, you know, if you watch my guide and you try to do this in live games and you mess up, you know, one and, one and three, one and five, that's totally normal, I think that's probably my success rate as well. Um, I think two out of three I'll I'll do correctly, and then maybe one out of three I'll panic and I'll I'll do it poorly. But there's still a lot of fun to do, so I uh, I always try to do them in live games when the pressure's on. The cheeky infinite swings. Now we just spun around the tower, took the aggro for our echo. I'm hoping that he could get the kill. Unfortunately, he couldn't. That is what it is. But our goal was the objective. Our goal was the mid tower. Echo ends up cleaning up the Katarina kill as well, which is quite nice. But uh, you can see here, we do that TP with W tech. It's very, very unexpected, very, very good to do. Um, highly effective, especially in solo queue, but even a pro play, I've found a lot of success doing this. Uh, people don't really expect you to show up in a lane, kill Katarina, and then suddenly you're bot lane again. Now here, we just casted our ult too early. You know, we could have just waited for a few more bolts, and we would have killed Kai'Sa instead. Um, we end up dying for it. And we also did the swing thing, right? This is now twice in the same game where I've swung. Uh, without pressing Q, without autoing, and my swing just did zero damage. In that whole encounter, my swing did zero damage. It was purely a, you know, gap closer swing. And uh, generally, if you do that, you will get punished. So, learn from my mistakes. Um, just try and gap closer with your autos, like I said. Or you can also try and Q through the wave to get, you know, the refreshed movement speed and and uh, get on top of your opponent that way. There's, there's, there's definitely different ways to do it. But holding your swing, I think, is number one priority on Akshan. And always just looking for these little cheese angles, you know, if she walks up to try and get a plate, she wants that single plate, she doesn't know my timer, I'm gonna cheese her. If she doesn't, then we just unstealth and, and grab the wave, right? There's nothing, you, you don't lose anything from this on Akshan, it only costs 40 mana to try. But you should always be looking for these kind of cheesy chunks at each wave if you can. I can see my whole team is playing bot side here, so it makes sense for me to, to play very aggressive on the bot tower. And we're just trying not to take not to take any damage, not to get chunked. You know, if Katarina stays here, that's great. But again, what are we playing for? We're just playing for the tower. So if she leaves, if she respects, cool beans. You know, she loses a wave. And uh, we can grab all the plates. Happy days. Remember that your void grubs give you, you know, two extra tower shots that you can stay for and do full damage to the tower. So um, always good to, you know, to min-max if you do end up getting grubs. Don't leave too early. And uh, yeah, it seems like she just gave up the tower. Uh, too much pressure from my team. Everything is probably black for her. Uh, my whole team is fogged. She decides to leave. And you can see how I take a short pause before catching this next wave, just to let my my wave act like a ward and give me a little bit of information. You know, making sure that I'm not being the one cheesed. And uh, when she gets overconfident, she thinks that I've based. Uh, we have an opportunity to kill her, but again, we kind of mess up. I think that's one of those cases where if you if you guys are ever around level 9 or level 10, just avoid using Akshan ult. If you are under level 11 with one full item on Akshan, your autos will do three times more damage than your full channel ult. You know what I mean? Just because your ult is level 1, okay? And uh, your autos, you know, crit. Or your autos do the, the empowered thing with Kraken. And yeah, so just, just don't... Don't even use your ultimate. It's a weird champion, right? With most champs, you really want to use your ult because it's the biggest, uh, the biggest part of your kit. But with Akshan, the ult is just so situational. It's really just like a Caitlyn ult where you chase people at the end of a team fight. You don't start with it. You know, you don't use it in one v ones. It's just, it's just kind of there. You know, if the opportunity is there, you use it. And if not, uh, I definitely know there's been some games where I've used my ult once the entire game on Akshan, or even just not used it at all, just because you go oom um, and it costs so much mana. So, yeah, be smart with Akshan. Rely on your autos mostly. Uh, your orders and your Q to solo people out. And uh, we see that our team's winning already, so I was ready to kind of walk towards the side that we're playing for, walk towards the objective, contest the Rift Herald, but by the time I based, uh, two of the enemies were dead. So really there was nothing to collect on that side of the map. So we just play three lanes while they're dead. Uh, you know, min-max our resources. We can see that Bada's showing on mid. Uh, the jungler is Graves, so he really has no threat on us. Graves, Katarina, absolutely horrific combination, right? No CC between them. Uh, it's just very hard to see them uh, ever getting a kill on us. And at this point, we're just so fed that we can pretty much single combo this guy. Just auto, auto, Q, E, auto, auto, and he's dead. Playing for the for the bot tower, normally you would have to back away and respect. But here, literally everybody's showing on the map, you know, we're, we're adapting to the situation. Yes, 
Um, I'd say in most games you would want to take all three outers first before you look for inner towers, but in this specific game, you know, they've just overcommitted their resources top lane and we're able to get a solo kill. And this is again that same play from earlier, right? You can see how I made a play bot and I immediately base, I immediately TP W'd into the next play. That's really, really important because if we got blue trinketed there, the blue trinket wouldn't see us because we can actually channel our uh, teleport in stealth. And we managed to come here. Nobody expects us to be here. We were just bought. You know, what is this map hacks teleporting from Arkshan? We pick up the easiest triple kill of our life and basically the game is won. So, uh, you know, if there's nothing else you take away from this video, this WTP strategy after showing on one side, you immediately WTP to the other. This will win you so many solo key games. Um, I'm sure what I was doing here, this was a little bit troll. I honestly thought I'd keep swinging past them. I just kind of wanted to swing around the tower and keep Kai'Sa interested. I didn't actually want to stop at Kai'Sa and face tank her, but I did. Um, Swing was a little bit wider than I thought. Still ends up working out. We don't lose our bounty, which is important. And uh, we secure ourselves a big reset. It's actually funny how that worked. We killed the guy bot lane. Then we teleported top. We killed three people top lane. And then we tell <laughs> we, we have mid and we also killed Kaisa. So we actually got five kills back to back to back without recalling. I'd say that's not great gameplay. You know, that means that we're fighting when we're not strong, when we haven't spent our money, but didn't get punished for it in this game and we're just considering where to go you know our AD carry cast is currently top lane so there's nobody to catch the mid wave we're just going to go catch the mid wave and uh, see what happens afterwards uh, there's no towers to take bot lane so ideally we want to be playing towards this side of the map towards top side because there's just more standing gold for us to get you can see we have great vision in their jungle so we're just considering cheesing this graves if we can but now we see the graves is kind of grouped up with his three other teammates we don't want to go for a 1v3 so instead Katarina probably going to walk towards this play and we end up uh, getting the kill on her very very easily and once again just going to catch the midway we're going to ignore our Cassiopeia we're going to ignore big clock shock uh, let him do his own thing push midway right make them respond the long way okay get the inner track to mid tower here start smacking this thing and uh, unfortunately they were able to cheat the move with bard portal something I did not think about and then we take him on a spin we take him on a journey with us imagine you're this bard you know how infuriating this is this is very, very tilting to watch, so you can also try to do this as well in your games. You know, you, you'll, you'll find the enemy team will surrender very quickly if you just spin around the tower like this and they can't catch you. Um, so satisfying. I mean, Arkshot is just mental warfare at its finest. I think, uh, you know, Alistar with the cowbell skin, uh, with, the, with the dance where he rings the cowbell, that, that one is mental warfare, and then Arkshot spins. I think these are the two strongest, um, most powerful or our weapons to tilt your opponent in League of Legends. Now, once again, we reset. Uh, we see that Fiora's already catching bot wave, so we won't be able to play on bot in time. Actually, realistically, I think we should have just passed bot here. We should have actually just walked bot lane, protected this bot wave, right? Fought Fiora on it, secured the dragon for our team. But I think my idea here was top bounty is up. Somebody will definitely greed for this top tower bounty. Uh, but I am playing the weak side of the map, and I should understand that. You know, my team doesn't see anyone on the map, so obviously there's at least three people here so what I'm doing is very very risky this ends up excuse me working out because I'm really really fed but this was a very risky play to go for it was sort of an unorthodox unexpected decision you can see my E is on cooldown I know I'm playing weak side so I'm just respecting it right I'm just waiting my E cooldown if I'm gonna walk up here I need my E to get away um, and hopefully if I just stay in fog long enough they should just show themselves and catch the wave they didn't gave me a full sense of security ended up almost getting caught but again it's just kind of a wall of gap uh, too much, too much money on my side. We've got three items on Akshan. So if you want a champion that will actually get you LP uh, on patch 14.13, Akshan is it. It's perfect with AP junglers. It's perfect in the current meta against the meta mids. And uh, if you have any questions about matchups or build orders, things like that, hop into my Discord. Links in the description below.